Good morning, good morning. I hope you are all doing well today. So today we are looking at um, linear equations. Okay, we are looking at linear equations. So that is what I've written here, linear equations. That's the topic we are looking at. So um, we've completed most of our, or almost all our form one topics. So now most of the topics you see me treating are form two topics. So I'm just going to be selecting some questions from, you know, some of the topics and we'll be solving them as time goes on. So today the topic we are looking at is linear equations. Now when we say linear equations, it simply means that when, when you are being asked to solve uh, an equation, that means you are being asked to find the value of the variable which makes the equation true. That means you are being asked to what? Find the value of the variable. And we know that these are the variables in the question. So we have x, we have x here, we have x here, we have y here, and we have x here. So that means we are being asked to find the value of the x in the questions. All right, so that is what we are going to be doing today. Now the questions comes like this. Find the, find the truth set of each of the following equations. Find the truth set of each of the following equations. So at the end of the day, you should be having something as x is equal to something to a number, um, x is equal to a fraction, it can be a fraction, it can be a negative number, it can be a positive number. Okay, so let's go um, right into the first question. It is 2x minus 6 is equal to 3 minus x. Now, when you have a question like this, what we normally do is that we group the like terms. We group the like terms. So this simply means that all variables should go to the, the one side. So you can see that there's two x here, there is x here. So x must join the two x here and the negative six. So it's not just a six, it is a negative six, it's a minus six. So it must also join the three. So the first step is that you group all like terms. So every variable that you see in the question must be grouped at one side of the equation, which is the, um, the equal to sign. So all variables go to one side and their numbers go to the other side. Okay, so I hope this is clear so far. Now let's go straight to solving the question. Okay, let's pick the first one. Now, we are trying to work group like terms. So, the first one is what? 2x minus 6 is equal to 3 minus x. Now, I said that we are grouping like terms. So, that means this x must join the 2x. And you know that it is crossing this is equal to sign. Now, if it is a minus x and it joins the 2x, you know that definitely it's going to be a what? A plus x now. Then this um, 6 is a minus. There's a negative attached to it. So, when it crosses the is equal to sign, it will become a positive Six. So let's do that. So the first step you go as 2x plus x is equal to let the person that is already there start. So you can see that 3 is already in that position. So 3 will start. So you bring your 3, then you bring your what? This minus has crossed here, so it becomes a positive 6. I hope that is right. Okay, now. 2x plus x, you know that any time there is a variable there is an, that is standing on its own, there is an invisible one that you do not see. You don't need to necessarily have to bring the one here, but you have to, for if you want to remember that there is a one, you can just bring it there to be on the safe side. So you have your 2 plus your 1 here giving you what 3x. So you write your 3x here is equal to 3 plus 6 is what 9. Now, we already know we are finding the value of x, so that means we want x to stand on its own. And you know what we do. When we want x to stand on its own, we divide the coefficient of that x by both sides of the equation. So, you divide 3 here, or divided by 3, or divided by 3. So, 3 cancels itself. 3 goes into 9, 3. So, that means x is equal to 3. So we have solved the linear equation by finding the value of x. So x is equal to what? 3. Right. Now if sometimes you have time, you can try to put it inside here. You can try to put you can put your 3 here, 
right and you can also put your three here so when you put your three here we said our x is three so three times two is what six six minus six is what zero three here this this place also x three minus three is also zero so you see that zero is equal to zero that means that our answer three is correct so if you finish and you want to um, be sure if your answer is correct that is how you can test it that means both sides of the equation should give you the same answer okay now let's move to the second question the second question is 5x is equal to 2x plus 3 5x is equal to 2x plus 3 a plus 9 sorry now i told you that all coefficients and variables anything that is similar so there's x here and there is x here that means this x must join this x so all the variables with their coefficients must be grouped at one side of the is equal to sign and the numbers at the other side of the is equal to sign so there is a 2x here so it must join this x this 5x now you can see that this uh, 2x doesn't have any operation sign here when there isn't an equation sign here, it is automatically a positive number. If it was a negative number, they would have brought a negative 2 here. But so far, if there isn't any sign there, any number that stands on its own like this is, a, is a automatically a positive number. So this 2x will cross this is equal to sign to join this 5x. And because it is a positive 2x, it will become a minus 2x, leaving the 9 here. So let's do that. So we have 5x x minus 2x is equal to 9 right so 5x minus 2x 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 so you bring your 3 and you bring your variable which is x is equal to 9 so you know what we do here we want the x to start on it so we divide both sides by the coefficient of that x so that is 3 so we divide 3 by 3 Divide 2 by 3, and at this point we cancel out 3 here, 1, 3 here, so x is equal to 3. So that is your answer. Right. So let's move to the next question. But before that, let's try to make sure that our answer is correct. Our x is 3, right? Now you bring your 3 here. You know that anytime a number is standing like this, it is multiplying. And our x, we found it to be what 3. So that means 5 times 3 is what 15. That means this side should also give you 15. Our x is what 3. So 2 times 3 is what 6. 6 plus 9 is what 15. So this side is 15, and this side is also 15, making our answer correct. Okay, let's move to the third question for the day. Now, when you have a question like this, right, the number they have given you, which is the base, this one is raised to the power x minus 2. The base is what? 5. And the power is x minus 2. It's one thing here. Now, what you do is that you have to change the number here to, to the power, to have the base 5 raised to a power. That is how you work it. So this one, you have to change it to a base 5 with a power. Now, how many fives can we get from 125? We can get three fives. So this is what you do. So you come down here. You can rewrite your question. 5 is a part x minus 2. It's minus 2, sorry. Minus 2 is equal to 125. So you have 5x minus 2 is equal to what 5 is the power what 3. 5 raised to the power 3. Okay, now at this point, you cancel out the 5. That is how it is done. So this 5 cancels out this 5, leaving us with what? The powers. So we have x minus 2 is equal to 3. What happens here? We want to find our x. Now, what is the difference between this situation here and this situation here, the 3x and this one? This one, you can see that it is x minus 2. x minus 2, this minus 2 is not the coefficient of x. So you don't divide it minus 2 and here minus 2, no. It doesn't work that way. At this point, the, negative, the minus 2 must cross to join the what? The 3. I hope you understand. So you have your x, then it's equal to 3 plus 2. Now you can see that this 2 was a minus. So when it crosses this equal to sign, it becomes a positive 2. So you have 3 plus 2 
giving you what? x is equal to 5. So this is your answer. This is your answer. Now, how do we know if our answer here is correct? We quickly come here. Our x is what? 5, right? So that means here I'm going to have what? 5 minus 3. 5 minus 3, sorry, 5 minus 2 is what? 3. So you have 5 raised to the power what? 3. And 5 raised to the power 3 is equal to what? 125. So this is how you are able to make sure that your answer that you have gotten is correct. Alright, let's move to the fourth question. The fourth question. Laws, we are going to apply the laws of indices here. But before we work this one out, let's re remind ourselves of what the, laws, the law of indices says. The law of indices says that numbers of the same base, when they are multiplied, what do you do to their power? You add. Numbers of the same base, 3 and 3, when they, when they are multiplying, when they are multiplying, what do you do to their power? You add. So you come down here and do 3 y plus 6 all is equal to what 3 raised to the power 3 y i hope you understand now at this point just as we did here you cancel out when you have numbers of the same base is equal and uh, equaling to each other you cancel the numbers out so at this point we are going to cancel the threes out so this three cancel this three so now we are left with what y plus six is equal to what three y so you come here y plus six is equal to what three y now what do i tell you at this point all variables must join each other they must come together so this y will join this three y leaving us with our positive six here so you have our positive six and we have three y now this y i told you that when you don't have any equation sign here it is automatically a positive y so the positive y is crossing here becoming what a minus y so you have six is equal to what you know that there's an invisible one here right so it becomes two y now what are we finding we are finding y so we have to Cancel, divide both sides by what? 2. So divide here by 2 and divide here by 2. 2 cancels 2, 2 into 6, 3. So our answer, y is equal to 3. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Okay, so anytime that I'm teaching something, try to get your books or your pen and your paper and be writing everything that I teach or else you will forget or else you, you'll be wasting data and you'll be keeping or you keep on playing the videos over and over again. So anytime I'm teaching something, just try to take your pen. Then whilst I'm doing it, you are also writing it down. Right, now we have the last question here. Our paper is full, so let me just take another paper. Okay, now, how do we solve the question like this? We can see that this one, they are variables, yes. So automatically we are coming to find our what? Our x. But then there is a bracket here. Okay, there is a bracket here. This is very easy. Now, what you do is that you will use negative here to open the bracket. It is automatically assumed that there is a one, an invisible one in front of this bracket, okay? And you know that anytime you have a bracket, if you want to open it, you use the number in front of the bracket to multiply each number of the bracket, which helps you to open the bracket, right? I hope you remember this. So if there was supposed to be a two here, to open this bracket, it would have been what? Two x times two, uh, two times six, all right? Two x plus two times six to open the bracket. Now, since there's no number here, there is automatically a 1 here. So, we are going to use this 1 to open the bracket. Now, the next step is check if the, the operation sign here is a positive or a negative number. Now, the operation sign here is a negative there. It's a negative operation sign. It is a minus. So, that means you're not going to use just 1 to open the bracket, but you're going to use minus 1 to open the bracket. Okay, so let's see how to do it here. So let me write the question. We have 4x minus, um, minus 1x plus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so I have my question here. 
Now remember, I put this one here because I know that there's an invisible one here. Even though the question made me put the one day, I know that I, there is an invisible one there which I'm going to use to open the bracket. It is not just one I'm going to use to open the bracket. So far as there's a minus here, I'll add the minus to the one. So now I'm using negative one to open the bracket. Okay, so now let's solve the question. Now our 4x comes down. You are not touching it. You're only touching it this one so one to negative one times x you know that negative is a very strong number so any number it multi any positive number it multiplies the answer will definitely be a negative answer so negative um, negative one times positive x will give us a what a negative x or negative you can bring the one but mostly it's not mature enough to bring the one but you should know that there's a one here okay now negative one times positive six you know that any time a negative number is multiplying a positive number, negative is always strong. So the, the answer will automatically be a negative answer. So negative 1 times positive 6 will give you a negative 6. Then you have 0 here. Okay. Now at this point, what we do is that we are going to group like terms. Fortunately for us, our 4x minus our x is already grouped. Now we have to bring this 6 to join the zero so that is how we solve it so we bring our 4x minus x is equal to zero bring your zero zero now this six you see it is a minus six so when it crosses this is zero this um, is equal to sign it becomes a positive six so now 4x minus x you know that there's an invisible one here so 4 minus 1 is giving me a what a 3 then i bring one of my x then i have my what my positive 6, 0 plus 6, you know it is 6. What do we want to do? We are finding our x. So we divide both sides by 3 so that our x will stand on its own. So we divide both sides by 3, divide here by 3 as well. 3 here, 1, 3 here, 1, 3 here, 1, 3 into 6, 2. So our x is equal to 2. Alright, so this is simply what we have been doing today very very easy and as usual i'll be putting more questions on the page for you to solve anytime you have any difficulty whatsapp me private message me and ask me the questions don't just sit at home and do wrong things for me i am available at any time so anytime you don't understand something send me a message and i will explain to you Okay, so have a good day and I'll see you all on Friday. Bye.